Hello, I'm Steve Meeky, and welcome to the first edition of Belfry Football's Between the Goalposts. And today we have a very, very special guest for you to start off our shows today, and that is going to be Cole Bentley, former Belfry High School standout on the football field and recent University of Louisville graduate, and more recently headed to the NFL as a free agent with the Arizona Cardinals. Cole, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm going to give you a number to start off with. You tell me what that is. 1,964. Any idea? I don't know. That's the number of miles from Belfry to Phoenix where you're headed. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, been a lot, a lot of sweat, a lot of blood, and a lot of tears along that way, right? Yes, sir. Do you remember the first team you played for? Uh, it'd be Tug Valley Midget League. Tug Valley Midget League. What color were you? Uh, gold and black. Gold and black. <laughs> what position did you play? Couldn't even remember. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, the reason I asked most guys like you, okay, started out as a quarterback, and, and mm -hmm. they finally come to their senses and become a lineman. So, <laughs> I think I played... Nose guard. No, that was my first okay. position ever, and never played O line. Never played O line until played. I got to college. To college. So. Wow. It's, it's it's amazing how a career path will take you, right? You don't have a lot of control over it, really, do you? No, you just you jump on for the ride. Well, and then we know you started out down there, then you came across the river, so to speak, and you ended up at Belford Middle School. Was what was that like at Belford Middle School? Uh, you know, it was a lot different. You know, you started actually going to school with those guys and starting to play with them and starting to kind of get to know them instead of just being thrown on a team, put a jersey on and go play. So it's definitely a lot different. And uh, I think there's a little more, it's more put together, so to speak. You know, you have, because you're working that same offense that you're going to work here, you know, all the way down from fifth grade on. And you had, you had a lot of success at the Belford Middle School. Really, it started Belford Middle School's run is when your class came through. Who were some of your classmates? I think a lot of our listeners are going to remember some of these names. Some, some There's names, names there, yes. Yeah, uh, Raekwon Horton, Cameron Catron, uh, Andrew Fletcher, Austin Hall, gosh, Austin Dotson. I mean, you name them, I'm sure people know them. That class was, we, we were that, they were loaded. special. All right, so once you got here from Belford Middle School, and I'm going to tell you, from, uh, from a fan standpoint, um, Expectations were high for you. I mean, everybody thought, okay, this is what we need. We've been close, been knocking on the door two or three years. We get this great freshman class comes in. What's the first thing you notice when you walked out there and you started practice and you started scrimmage and you actually got into the skit? What's the difference? It's the speed of the game. You know, I think with every every level that you increase, you know, you go from middle school to high school, high school to college. It's all the guy you're going against. He's he he's a step ahead of you. He's trying or he knows his technique a little bit better, it's a little bit faster, he gets to where he needs to be a little faster. So uh, that was definitely the, the biggest thing is, you know, you step in as a freshman and you're going against a defensive tackle that's been working at the high school level for three years now. Yeah, experience counts, doesn't it? It really does. It's tough coming in there as a freshman, you was on the field so much. So many of those guys you mentioned played and became such a big part of, of that season. And, and, and again, once that season was over, how did it end up that year? State championship. State championship. Three, three, and we know the Palm Creek Nation, we're not satisfied with just one, are we? <laughs> no, we want another one. So now, after that first season was over, what did you go back and say, here's what I got to get better at? Uh, for me, the thing I needed to get better at, you know, football-wise, was just being under control. You know, I think uh, freshman year, I got on my toes a lot, was uh, kind of on the ground a little bit more than what I should. Growing pains. <laughs> <laughs> Second year, we come back. What, how's that end up? I don't know. I think that was uh, that was the, probably the best one we played. I think that was probably our best season. Sophomore year, though, it, it was a great year. You know, we had a lot of good guys in that senior group that we wanted to take out the right way, and uh, no, it was a sweet year for us. So, at what point now did the dream of okay, I want to play college football, not just college football. I want to play college football at the highest level. When did that dream come in? Uh, freshman year, that dream was was kind of just sparked a little bit you know I knew I could play college football didn't know what level or where uh, sophomore year I, I felt like I was developing pretty good I felt like I was you know I was coming along the way I should I think sophomore year was probably once I got around in that camp circuit you know and I started going to these camps was getting named to some teams and getting to do some stuff and getting noticed a little bit I thought you know it was a possibility of you know going to that top level and and so if, if somebody young is listening to this right here can you achieve a dream like that but just showing up and practicing five days a week or does it take a little bit more it takes a little bit more so you know something that I've always thought about or something that's been told to us at the college level is if you show up at practice and you work as hard as you can 
between the beginning of practice and the end of practice, you're going to be average to good. That's, that's all your potential can be. You, you can go out there and go as hard as you can during those whistles, but greatness is, is made after those whistles or before those whistles. It, it's not made during practice. To be a good player, you've got to go out, you've got to practice hard. But if you want to be one of the best, you have to work when no one else is. And, that's, that's, that's a great piece of advice right there. You can show up and practice, practice as hard as you want. Uh, you'll be good, but when you want to be great, you got to put in some extra time. That's, sure. Absolutely. And I know you did. You went to so many camps uh, in the summer, and you got, you got your name out there. Uh, then that junior year comes on. It ends how? <laughs> I think that was, our, that was our best one, yeah. I think. That was 42 to 10, maybe. It was a, it was a really good win. Yeah, and then, you know, it doesn't end there. And then you come back for the senior year. Okay, you put in all this time and everything. College people are knocking on your doors. You're getting letters. Um, now now it's getting serious, okay? You're going to start making decisions. But before we get into making these decisions, how'd that senior year end? It ended, uh, it ended in a 4P. It was, it was a great year. We end up four state championships. I mean, everything's good. Now Cole Bentley has to make a decision. Okay. Sure. And has to make it pretty quick too, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Sure. And uh, everybody's excited. That was a, a big thing on Pond Creek here. Where's he going? What's he going to do? Whatever. And then you finally make that decision. Why University of Louisville? Uh, with U of L, you know, it was in. I, I didn't really want to go too far away from home. You know, I know my, my parents, my grandparents, they had a big role in me making it to where I, you know, to sign into that school and going to Louisville. So I wanted them to be able to come to my games. I know a, a flight's not a, not something you can really do around right. here. You know, we don't really have any local airport. That's not too close, is it? No. So I knew it had to be driving distance, and it couldn't be eight, nine hours. So it needed to be somewhere close, but somewhere that, you know, I knew I could go and wouldn't, wouldn't sit and sit and sit, and not actually get a chance to play. And I thought Louisville kind of fit the, the, the perfect point of all those, all that criteria. You know, I thought at Louisville I could come in and could maybe get some early playing time and maybe start or something like that, and I could still get a good education, and my parents and grandparents and Bree could all come and get to watch me. So uh, that was kind of the the point of uh, or that perfect point. You know, it just had a little bit of everything that I needed in the school that I chose, and ultimately why I picked it. And so the level of competition that you lined up against every Saturday. There's no, there's no taking a Saturday off, is there? There's a, there's a name on the, there's a name you're playing against every week, and uh, that was something I liked. You know, it gives you something to play for when you're, when you're in practice in week eight or week nine. Your body's a little sore, and you're kind of feeling like, you know, I don't know if I want to do it today. Well, I got him this week. You know, I got, I got this guy this week. You know, we, we really need to get out here and work. Yeah, and so many of those guys that you're talking about, I got him this week. That's a Saturday. We see so many of those guys on Sunday now. I mean, the level of competition that you, you played against was, was, was pretty remarkable, you know. And to get to, it's, it's a long way from Belfry Middle School to Louisville, wasn't it? <laughs> it? It was a long way. So looking back, these kids now that come from the middle school, we've got a great middle school class coming up. What's your advice to them? Just work. Uh, it's, it's a simple, simple thing. It's just get out and work. You can never, if you're on the field and you're trying your best, you can't go wrong. You, you might not be doing the technique right. You might not be... You might not be doing the play right, but as long as you're doing it full speed, a coach can work with you, a coach can get it right. Yeah, as you long never, as you're out there applying yourself. You never really get to that destination. You're always working, aren't you? You're always There's always another step you can go. Yes, always another step to go. And I think the thing about you, from watching you from afar, and I, I think uh, what maybe separates you from a lot of other people that's come through here, I, I think you're self-motivated. I think I know your coaches pushed you. I've had many conversations about that, but I, I think deep down, I think you wanted to be the best Cole Bentley you could be, sure. and, and I think that showed. And all this work has has paid off. Sure. And then you get to the point, Louisville, biggest ball game you ever played was at Louisville. It was uh, biggest ball game I played. Biggest ball game ever played. Whew. That's tough. Uh, there, there's been a lot. I'd say the most difficult for me would be uh, Clemson. Junior year, or either nope, sorry, sophomore year. Clemson sophomore year at Clemson, uh, you had Dexter Lawrence, Cleveland Farrell, uh, Christian Wilkins. You had another, you know, I guess you could call him irrelevant when you're looking at those yeah, three. Right. But he was a third round yes. draft pick. Uh -huh. uh, that that defensive line was just yes, it was just yeah. You, they just had guys everywhere. They had five stars that were third strings, so it was a. Uh, that, you know, difficulty difficulty wise, that was probably the hardest game I played. Biggest game would probably be NC State. 
uh, probably freshman year. You know, that was kind of the first game I got to play in. You know, we were ranked, they were ranked. It was at their place. And I don't know if anyone's been to NC State, but they're uh, they're in the middle of the woods in North Carolina. Uh, I've been there. Their stadium's kind of down in the ground. You got trees over you. The, the, the fans seem like they're right on top of you. Their, uh, their student section is right behind our bench. And if anyone's been to a college football game and heard student sections, especially night games, they tend to, you know, say some things they probably shouldn't say. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, oh, both yeah. ranked, Welcome to college football. Yeah, both ranked opponents. Uh, you know, they had one of the top defenses in the country. You know, we've got Lamar right after his uh, Heisman year. So it was a – that one was – and just, you know, me coming in as a freshman and I'm in there – you know, four games deep into my career, and I'm just out there, just don't know what's going on. Just trying to figure it out as it gets put in front of me. But uh, that one was probably the, the biggest game we got to play, in, I think, or that I got to play in. What What do you think? You know, I, I watched so many of your games on TV and stuff, and I have an opinion on this. What do you think your biggest attribute was as as an offensive line? You had to make that transition from a tight end. Now you're playing center. In one of the premier, you know, conferences, and, and, and playing like you say against some of the best competition in the country, what, what do you think was one of your your strengths that that, that you really relied on? Uh, the thing I relied on the most was my athleticism. You know, I knew that we run a we're heavy outside zone team. Uh, a lot of the times, I'm trying to I'm reaching a shade, a guy in the gap, or a G all by myself. The guards working with the tackle, and uh, you know, for anyone that. You know, knows some football. You know, outside zone, the ball's going outside, and that guy's already got. A he yard knows. He knows it's going outside. He's got a yard of leverage on me, and I'm trying to snap it, get my head across, and run. So uh, that was that's a big part of outside zone being able to have a center that can do that. And so that would be one of my strengths, just my athleticism. And if you ever, you know, if you ever get behind a man in pass pro or a step behind or a step off, you know, you can kind of rely on that athleticism to be able to recover and get back into it. But do you feel like. Belfry prepared you for Louisville? I do. I feel like Belfry prepared me for, for college football because when you get to the college level, there's a, a lot of O-linemen, you know, they come from, you know, you've got people coming from everywhere and you all get there and you, you see a lot of offensive linemen. The run game's the biggest part of football. I mean, if you don't have an offensive line that can come off and move bodies and, you know, third and one, you can't keep the chains moving, keep the chains moving. You're Absolutely. Not gonna be a, you're not going to be a good, not going to be a good O-line. And so building off that, uh, just the aggressiveness that Belfry football has and that it instills an offensive lineman. If you can go to college and keep that aggressiveness but still play under control, you know, you're, you're, you're probably going to get on the field pretty good if you yeah. can be an aggressive offensive lineman. So you get the Louisville. You have tremendous success. You took so many of these lessons you learned here. You know, think along the ways when you played Tug Valley and it just came with you. And, and now you're at Louisville. Now how big did the dream get of, of the NFL? Uh, once I got down there, it, it felt kind of like a roller coaster almost. <laughs> really, uh, you know, when I first got there, I got some success early, got to play a little bit, got some starts, and uh, you know, it felt like that that I was on the up and up and up. And then junior year, we go through spring ball. I have to have a surgery. I'm out of spring ball. You know, kind of trying to rehab it back. I get back, and my ankle still feels a little. A little fuzzy and I'm trying to rebuild and get back for fall camp. Fall camp starts and I don't feel like I'm quite ready. I didn't get that whole off season of training that you know you, you right. really you, you almost really need. So, you know, I'm going through that year, my junior year, and I kinda of feel, you know, a little all over the place. I don't feel like I'm quite there ready, but I have to be ready for it. You know, when your name's called you gotta be ready for it. So uh I felt a little all over the place and I felt like that that climb kind of stalled a little bit but uh just as the years went on I felt like there was a lot of them but uh, as the years went on I just felt like it was a slow little steady build up all the way to it to where you get to that point to where you know you kind of you've got those guys where you look at and you're like you know I think he can do it I think he can do it he can definitely do it and I think I kind of turned into one of those guys where it was a yeah, I think he can do it. Yeah, and it's, you know, you talk about that slow, slow climb. You know, what you're doing, you're just building a big, strong foundation, oh, and, and that's it. And, and so now you graduate, and also tell us about academically. Now, you just didn't go down and play football, right? No, okay. Now, I know a lot of people has, but you didn't. Tell us, tell us about your academics. So I got my degree in sport administration. Uh, you know, I 
felt like I, I really liked that. I liked sports. It was something that, you know, you could build off of. There's a lot of career paths you can choose from that. And then my master's came around. They gave me a decision. They was like, hey, you know, what do you kind of want to master in? Do you want to go and double up in, in that? And I was like, well, you know, let me, let me see what options I have. And, you know, I was searching around and something that really interested me. And it was kind of during a there was a big boom in this industry at the time, and it's uh, I kind of got stuck on real estate development. So, you know, I, I told them I wanted to go into that, and I got my master's in real estate development, and here soon I got to take a test to become a certified real estate developer, and so that's something I got to plan for as well. But, uh, you know, I got my, basically I got my degree in sport administration and my master's in real estate development. Yeah, so you really take care of your future, right? So, yeah, that that's it. You got you got several options there, and that's that is so important. I mean, you just gave some people some advice. You know, young people watching that, you know, you may not play this game forever, but you're going to live forever. So you're going to have to have something to fall back on. Yeah, because you got to have a paycheck, don't you? Yeah. A absolutely. All right. So this is the moment I've been wanting to ask you, whatever. <laughs> All right. You know, everybody's the draft and whatever. And I and I'm a pro football junkie. I mean, I love this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I know about all this, you know, free agents and stuff like that. You know, the name does not have to be called. Uh, uh, I'm going to throw a little fact at you. And you've probably never heard these two names. Jim Langer, Larry Little. You ever heard of those two guys? Oh, sir. You ever heard of the 19, I, I'm telling my age now, the 1972 Dolphins? Sir. Undefeated. Yes, sir. Last team to do it. Everybody says maybe the greatest team ever. Those two guys started on that offensive line. And you know what they were? Free agents. And you know, now they share the same real estate. You know what real estate is? Hall of Fame. So don't tell me you got, you know, you don't have to have your name called. I mean, just the, the, the number of people. Uh, Kurt Warner, one of the best quarterbacks ever. You know, you know his story. He was bagging groceries. Next thing you know, he's in Canton giving out a Hall of Fame speech. So there's different roads in the NFL. You know, and you find out in the NFL, they care about one thing. Can you play? That's it. So tell us about getting the call. Uh, it was a little nerve-wracking at first, you know, the, I had an agent, I have two agents, one of them told me, uh, you know, right after the draft, they should be calling, keep your phone line open, then the other one, you know, he had failed to mention that they was going to be calling him. So, uh, the draft ends, you know, we're watching the TV, watching the ticker, and it just keeps going on and on and on, and I'm like, ah, I don't, don't think it's going to happen. And, uh, draft ends. You know, I have my phone sitting on the table. Me and Bree were sitting outside just looking at it, waiting for it to light up. And, <laughs> you know, minutes keep ticking by, ticking by. And I'm like, oh, man, this is uh, this ain't good. You know, my agent told me I should have some, some teams calling. This is uh, I think going the way I thought. And uh, about 30 minutes after, you know, I put my phone, I took it back off loud, put it back on vibrate. I was like, ah, it's, I guess it's yeah, it ends here. I had a good run. It's all right. And then, uh, Agent called me and I'm walking through the house. He calls me and I thought it was going to be the hey, you know, I guess, I guess you know, nobody was really interested. But uh, apparently he had been on the line talking with other teams and I didn't even know he didn't fill me in on it. He was the one doing all of the talking, and so you know we sat on it. And he told me the Cardinals and so that was a uh, you know he went through, looked at the depth charts and kind of made that decision based off of what the history, what the depth chart of that team has, and you know ultimately he. Kind of picked the Cardinals for me, and you know, that's probably where I would have chose anyway. Right. But uh, it was a little nerve-wracking, really. You know, I necessarily didn't get the call; my agent did. But uh, you know, I'm just happy that someone called for me. Absolutely, and, and you know, and, and with that call, everybody, you know, everybody in the league, you know, gets that call whether you drafted, whether you go as a free agent, you get that call, and whatever. And I, I think the one thing the drafted, the free agents, everybody has in common is all they want. All you wanted was an opportunity. Yes, sir. That's it. You just want an opportunity. That's, that's all you can ask for. That's I mean, it. Just and to even, just to even have a team mention your name, or just even such an honor. I mean, that's an honor. NFL says, "Hey, we want you. We want to take a look at you." Now, after after you finished your career there last season at Louisville, I mean, they just sit around, you know, and and uh, uh, sit on the couch and you know eat Cheetos and, and wait for the draft to happen. What? Well, now tell us about that. You know, we took you. We took you from the middle school to the high school to little. Now little one out to where you are here. Uh, that that process was uh, it was kind of a, a rocky road. You know, I decided uh, I was going to go train in Nashville, and uh, so we we moved down there. Went all over the place. We was training. It was kind of a, a tough place. You know, I was driving 30, 40 minutes back and forth to the facility, and it just got a little little too expensive for me. 
Uh, you know, because I was trying to pay for it on my own. I didn't right. want my agent to, you know, he told me whatever he wanted, you know, he'd pay for it. And I just didn't necessarily want to do that. Didn't want to owe somebody. If it didn't work out, didn't want to put myself behind the gun, just, you know, starting life out. So, uh, smart. Decided to go back to Louisville. You know, we got a really good trainer there who he does all of the combine prep. And, uh, you know, he's Coach Quan. He's a, he was at the Jets for a little bit. So, you know, he's been through that process recently and he knows what it takes and what they're looking for. So I decided to move back to Louisville, got me a, you know, that the place in Louisville, was training there. And that was every day, you know, five, six days a week, all the way up until pro day. And pro day comes, uh, didn't do as good as I wanted to. Uh, had the stomach virus or food poisoning about the day before Yes, yeah, so, yeah, you know, I was laying time. there. Bree was down with me. I woke middle of the night. I was puking. Had some, you know, some problems there. I lost six pounds the day before pro day. So uh, that process, I obviously didn't put up the numbers I wanted to. I was just drained. You know, that that whole day took a lot from me. Wish I would have definitely got that day back, but you know, ultimately it it worked out. So that process was really tough. You know, it's a lot of. Uh, a lot of just you're working on yourself really and that's the first time in years that you really got to do that you know as a team you're working out and you'll go out and run you'll be pushing a five-man sled with your you know other four offensive linemen you know, you're working out as almost as one you know and now you're in the weight room doing it all by yourself you go out you're working on your 40 you go out you're, you know you're all of that during the off season you're you're focused on so many and then now it's just you. You're just trying to make you as good as possible. And it was a it was a definitely an interesting type of training because you're training for these set specific things instead of training for a whole offense. You're training for this drill, this drill, this drill, and this drill. Yeah, I think you, you caught somebody's attention that uh, that you got the call. You leave this Thursday, sir. It's it's an exciting time, isn't it? It yeah. is. You know, it's the the days. Tick by, you know. I just keep telling Bree, I'm like, this is a, I just can't believe it's really happening. You know, it's you look back and I come here and I'm training, walking through the facility here, and I'm like, gosh, I just feel like I was a little kid when I was walking around here, and now I'm, you know, it's almost 10 years ago I was walking around here, so it's definitely a, uh, it's, it's definitely surreal, you know, as the as the day gets closer that I get to fly out there, but uh, it's a. Uh, you know, it's kind of just waiting for that moment where I get out there and you know, it really, you know, it clicks. Is. And when you get the call and, you know, that's awesome. And when you're on your way out there, that's, you know, you're, you're expecting it. But when you really set feet in their locker room and you're, you're thinking, I'm really here. This is, you know, I think that's going to be a, probably going to need to take a seat at that moment and try right. to, you know, collect myself. Because that's going to be a real surreal thing. Because that's, you know, I've ever since, like we said, you know, I've played at Tug Valley Midget League and, you know, this dream's been sparked for many years now, and you know, it's so many days that you've just worked and worked, and it's led to that one moment. So it's going to be a, a surreal thing, and uh, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be a, an eye-opening experience. Absolutely. Well, i tell you what, we've enjoyed being able to, to sort of be on this journey with you. You know, nothing like going through that tunnel, is there? No, there's not. No, there's not. It's, you know, and you know, you're at, at Louisville, there might be more people there. There might be a, a bigger stadium, but just with the pride that's associated with Belfry football, and just knowing that each and every person that's on that field that you're running by, or you know, slapping yeah, everybody's we, faces, the kids are trying to jump up and grab your helmet, and you know, it's something that you know I'll never forget. No matter what, I right. can run out in front of a hundred thousand people. You know, there's nothing that'll replace total time, just because of you know the, the situation of what that is and just the meaning behind it yeah i've always wanted somebody to give me the definition of palm creek nation you just did <laughs> that that's what it's all about sir that's it now can't let you leave now you know football player college professional football player he's also got another job coming up that uh, uh his lovely wife Bree. Tell, tell us about that because i i got the yeah, you know we saw you both yesterday and uh Yes. What else is getting close? Not just going to Harry. <laughs> Something else is getting there's close a, in your life. There, there's a there's a due date out there. Okay. It's, it's lingering around. You know, we uh, gosh, it's a uh, you know, football football is great and all, and you know, there's a lot of moments that's associated with football. But hearing hearing something that you've you've created and it's living, and you hear its heartbeat, oh Lord, I was 
you know, football's bring me to tears a, a couple of times, but I've never cried as hard as, and you can ask Bree next time you see her, I've never cried as hard as whenever I've seen the harp. I'm about to tear up right now. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a... Big step, baby. It's yeah. a big step. We, uh... There's a lot, uh, this, 2022 is going to be a, a big year for, uh, for the Bentleys. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, uh... I'm gonna make it. It's a boy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bo Maverick. Bo Maverick. Okay. There's and uh, uh, we go to church together, and so we have updates on Bo Maverick all the time. And and uh, now before we leave, we don't know what's going to happen on Thursday, but I know this: you have a whole community so proud of you, what you've accomplished. I mean, it's it's just unreal. But you got to promise me one thing: wherever this journey takes you, Sir. when Bo Maverick gets to be a freshman. He's got to come back here and play. I got to. He promised me I that. Will. Okay, because we are family here, you know that. Yes, sir. We have enjoyed this today, Cole. We've learned so much, and I want you to know you've got a bunch of people rooting for you, Thank and you. you have really given us some great moments in our life that we got to share with you, and we, we appreciate you coming. We don't wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you.